Hello and welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is your girl Rochelle and I am doing another trending topics type of an episode. I hope that you had a wonderful and safe Memorial Day, Memorial Weekend. I am still currently on vacation. I'm going on a quick little overnight day trip I don't know what you want to call it um little getaway so I am recording this I was thinking about doing a re-release but I was like you know what I'm gonna get this recorded up well I'm not gonna get it up it'll, it will release normal times but I was like you know what nope I'm not gonna re-release I'm gonna record this I at the thing the reason why I was thinking about releasing because I had an idea for a different topic um, but I'm not prepared for that topic it, it, it will come out this month though but there have been some things happening in social media or with our stars and just some things that have been occurring and so I was like you know what I, I got some ideas for a topic I'm gonna record this and keep it pushing I'm not gonna re-release now there may be some times when I do re-release but I got enough content for this episode so here we go a little disclaimer I had a disclaimer for my last episode which was my review of love and marriage DC I am currently recording in my office I'm trying it out I really want to start recording in my office and there was a little bit of noise at the end. I don't, I think I know what that noise is. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to work that kink out. If I can work that kink out, I think my office is a nice place to record. And also I am kind of, well anyways, I don't, I don't actually need to get into that, but <laughs> it is more comfortable physically for me to record in my office versus where I was recording so if I can get that together I would like to record in my office since I do predominantly work from home I am set up to kind of in an office setting I do have a desk and all those things and where I was recording it was essentially it was kind of bad for my back I'm not gonna hold you <laughs> so my office is physically more comfortable for me to record in but I do have to move some things around because it, it is more of a war it's more set up for me in my work and I have to kind of get another station to be podcasting and doing some other personal stuff so if I can get the sound situation better because my sound where I was previously recording the sound was better I was set up sonically better but not physically better so I'm working it out and so I'm just if you hear some random noises I apologize and just kind of rock with you girl as I get my life together but if this if this is like part two of sound being not great, I will not do this again until I can get my acoustics together. I am on vacation, so it's just like listen, we gotta it was either get this out or re-release. I'm not at in I'm not able to really put that to get everything together before I'm I'm literally out of town tomorrow. So here we are. <laughs> long story short that was really long-winded but I just want to apologize because I know that can be kind of that can be maybe an annoyance but let's get into the episode so I was following this a little bit and I was like mm, mm, mm. we got a lot going on in our country a lot going on and so at first I was like, you know, are you, is this serious? And then this is why I want to talk about it because, you know, I don't think that this was handled appropriately. Please, this will be released on YouTube. It may be released a little bit late. I'm going to try because I am traveling tomorrow. I am going to try to get this onto YouTube as much as early as possible. 
if you are able leave me some thoughts on this this whole D.L. Hughley and Monique dramatics so if you are not familiar with it I'm gonna try to summarize it I'm gonna try to be as accurate as possible because this was all over the place so basically D.L. Hughley and Monique had a show together a comedy show together Monique went on I didn't even realize I thought it was like a few minutes initially she went on stage and did at least a 10 minute rant because she was unhappy with DL basically she said that DL was tripping because he did not want her to headline the show even though according to Monique her contract said that she was supposed to be the headliner so she went off and she was just saying so many disparaging crazy out-of-pocket things about DL what does his name stand for is he on the DL he must be intimidated by a boss woman my contract says that I'm supposed to be the headliner he was talking crazy to me blah 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 so DL he got on Instagram and he was like listen my contract says that I was supposed to be the headliner I don't know what Monique is talking about if anything that Monique has shown she is dramatics blah 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 so then I was like well who who contract said what but here's the thing about Dio and I'm gonna prep I'm gonna say I'm team Dio I am a fan of Dio ever since the Kings of Comedy actually before the Kings of Comedy because I remember Dio Hughley from Comic View so I you know I've been a fan of Dio from very 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 long ago but DL started pulling receipts and if there's you know one thing about it is you can say whatever but when you have the factual facts so DL started pulling up receipts and so initially you know DL was like and I want to go back I'm going back to Instagram and he was just like um Initially, he just made a post and he was like, all you have to do is check the order of the names on the ticket stubs and you'll see why I'm confused. He's like against my better judgment and over the objections of my team and four and four other occasions where I said no, I decided to take a chance and work with Monique. He's like, Oprah was the problem, Tyler was the problem, Tyler Perry, Charlemagne was the problem, Steve Harvey was the problem, Lee Daniels was the problem. Netflix Netflix was the problem now it's my turn at some point it can't be everyone else it's you lesson learned I don't have anything personal against Monique people paid a lot of money to laugh not hear about your contract apparently the role you played in Precious turned out to be an autobiography I wonder who's next So, and then he signed his name, Daryl Lynn Hughley. And I always wondered what D.L. Hughley stand for. His middle, his first name and his middle name is Daryl Lynn. So I learned something new. <laughs> um, and then Pete, some people came out and was like, yo, I, I've been attacked by Mo, Monique, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And it wasn't a lot of people, but there were some people that were commenting like, listen, pfft. It's, it's been um, a few of us that have um, worked with her and it's not been a pleasant um, situation. And so Monique responded, you know, show your contract. You're saying all these things, show your contract. My contract shows that I was supposed to be the headliner. So then later on, DL posts, he posts, um, I don't know what this is, it's some sort of like radio promo and it's, 
It says 105.9 Kiss FM presents the comedy of explosion starring Dio Hughley and then Monique. And then he also posts what looks like, um, oh, well, he posts the show schedule. And on the show schedule, it shows um, the other comics. So it's like the host, it's Aida Rodriguez, who's another comedian. Monique, there's an intermission. Josh A. Adams, I don't, I'm, I don't know if he's a comedian or radio host. I'm not sure who Josh Adams is. And then D.L. Hughley. So it, it posts the show schedule where there's Monique and then there's D.L. Hughley. And then ultimately he does post his contract. And in there it does show that he is in his contract. It shows that he was the closer. Now Monique does post a contract of her own. Now here's the thing. DL posts a memo and it shows that he's the closer. Monique shows a contract and it shows that she, like, um, I think it shows that, like, she's not supposed to go on after a certain time. Here's, here's my thing. Rock with me. DL had multiple receipts. Not only does he have a memo and someone explained and it actually was Kevin on stage. He's, he said as a comedian, he never sees anymore the full contract. He sees the contract memo, which is the abbreviated version of the contract because he said he does so many shows. The contract is too long. He just wants to see the pertinent points, you know, kind of like what's expected of him, how much he's going to get paid, like what type of monies he's getting from the door, is he getting comp tickets. So he sees the memo, the abbreviated version. So it's not uncommon for a comedian to see the memo. It's not uncommon for someone to get a contract and it's on their own letterhead. But in DL's defense, not only does he have the memo, the contract, he has promotional material that shows his name before Monique. He has the show schedule that shows him before Monique, which suggests that he is supposed to close the show. So in my little layman outside looking in, it does seem like one of two things happen. Or a multitude of things happen. Maybe DL was supposed to close the whole time. Maybe they both were told that they were supposed to close and then it was decided, okay, DL. Ultimately, it does look like DL was ultimately supposed to close. The issue to me is not with DL. It sounds like you ever heard of the movie Janky Promoters? It sounds like the issue is with the promoter. The issue is not with DL. He has proof receipts that he was supposed to close. He has black and white multiple receipts of him being the closer. So my thing is at the end of the day, if there are this is a this is a business concern. This is a business issue. Do we not handle things behind closed doors? If I was a patron, listen, I don't get out much. I'm still, you know, I, I get my toe out, a couple toes out, and I go back in. I'm not out in these streets. If I pay my hard-earned money, I don't want to hear your rant about, at a comedy show, about something that's a business thing first of all between no comics between no promoters handle that behind closed doors she went i mean it i thought it was a few minutes supposedly it was like a 10 plus minute rant what are, what are we doing at the end of the day the last thing D, dl has a morning show and he um, let me tell you something when i tell you he summed everything up and he, he then he dropped the mic and he said, you know, with everything we got going on in this country, people come to shows, whether it's a comedy show, a concert, 
a play, to escape, whatever. They want to have a good time. I got a show I'm going to. I'm, I actually I have a comedy show. I don't want to hear about no rant that, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't a part of your show, <laughs> don't give me no 10 minute rant. You know, I'm not with the salaciousness when I pay money for the show. It's bad business. And Monique is always John, Sally, Susie, Tommy, Timmy did me wrong. At some point, this is Whenever there's a problem, and, and, and have you ever worked somewhere? You got a coworker. This one did this, this one did that, this one doing. At some point, you'd be like, dang, the common denominator is you, boo. At some point, there must be an issue with not all of these people can't be doing you wrong. You have to be able to conduct yourself in the proper manner that was not a proper manner and she brought up something i guess and i don't know where it was supposedly i don't know the ins and out i'm not researching this she went on dl show his co-host asked her a question that that she didn't like and it was something towards her husband that ain't had nothing to do with D.L. Hughley. I get it was his show. He didn't ask the question. But even if he did ask the question, do we not handle do we not handle things privately? Do you do we not say, yo, I'm not I'm not answering this. This was inappropriate. And if if that bothered you so much, why are you doing a show with him afterwards? There wasn't no other shows for you to do? that couldn't have bothered you that much you know because you still doing work with them you harboring stuff so much and then something else happened and you go through the roof to the moon over the top and now here's the narrative of dang she troublesome to work with because maybe she really is troublesome to work with so I say all that to say this, handle your business, but it doesn't have to be, nobody can do in that audience can do nothing for you. Handle your business. If it's a contract dispute, there's ways to handle that. There's literally legal ways to handle that. If you got an issue with the comics, with the promoter, you can literally go to the courts and be like, yo, pay me my money, handle it the right way. And you can get your propers. So I'm Team DL on that. I just thought that was just... I'm like, girl, again? <sighs> so I did not start my podcast <laughs> with my segment that I typically started with, which is Rochelle's Rant or Rochelle's Raves. But I'm going to start it off now. So I am on vacation. And... That's my rave. <laughs> my rave is to have a week off from work to do the things that I need to do to not have to be so pressured and feel like, oh my goodness, I have these things to do, but I only have a short amount of period of time. And just to kind of lounge around, I am taking a really quick little day trip, overnight trip, and also to kind of binge watch TV. Hello. And so this brings up my next topic. So I have heard of the show, The Circle. I tried to watch it, I couldn't get into it. And then I had some coworkers who we were just talking about. We have our little like instant message chat and they were like, I hope, you know, you guys watch The Circle cause you know, that's, that show means so much to me. And I was like, I couldn't get into it. And they were like, oh my goodness. And then I was looking for something to watch and I have shows to watch and I actually have movies to watch that I'm paid for it. But I was like, let me try Let me just try to watch one episode and really get a sense of what the heck this show is. Child, I did not sleep for like almost two days. <laughs> binge watching, maybe like a day and a half, binge watching one season. Then I tried to watch another season in the I binge watched the current season and then I tried to watch the third season and then I got irritated that one of the people got 
kicked off because I was like, are you kidding me? But it's just like the social media like experiment where you can even go where you can either go as act as yourself or catfish and it's it's super interesting but the thing that annoys me or not annoys me this is that may not, they may that may not be i'm sorry the correct term the thing that's so interesting but this is what catfish people do they no one can see each other until they are kicked off the show they be having conversations and it's not long conversations it's not like love is blind as other people and they really they get into it and I'm just like I don't understand it I just men posing as women men posing as other women like this one guy posed as his girlfriend not to spoil spoil alert here we spoiler alert one of the seasons and it they were in a group chat he was in a group chat with like two or three other women and they were talking about menstruation and they, and one was like oh my goodness i'm so glad my period's almost over i haven't been feeling well and he was just trying to figure out what to say and i was just like are you kidding me you don't know nothing about it it was just so like weird but it's interesting too so um and then you see who win like the winner of season four like was i was very happy with so it's a cool show it's interesting and i was locked in i um i watched the season four i kind of i watched season four i watched season one but i sped through it a little bit i couldn't get through season three because it irritated me and then season two i didn't watch because i found out who was the winner of season two and i was like i can't watch this because i know who won but so if you have a chance it's you you have to accept it for what it's for you know um it's a pretty cool show <laughs> i binge watched that heck so that's my rave my rave is being on vacation i'm so glad to have a break because i actually won't potentially have a long break again until september unfortunately so i'm just glad to be able to have some rest and relaxation get some sleep get some stuff done around my household take a little quick trip just to get to have some enjoyment to get away um spend some time with family that's just that's my rave right now and i have a recipe i was supposed to cook it for memorial day that is my goal too i because i got all the ingredients that i need for this recipe i have to try this recipe that i found on instagram that's my goal and it, it's going down so anita baker shout out to anita baker one of our great artists r&b artists she I think she has a residency in Vegas right now and she announced there was a thing a little while back where she really encouraged people not to play her music because she did not own her masters and that's hard child because I love me to the Baker but I respected it I tried to respect it as much as possible but she did announce a while back that a little while back that you could play her music now but there was really not much information but about within the last week or two she at one of her concerts she shouted out chance the rapper and she thanked him for helping her get her masters back so i don't know what mojo he got but kudos to chance for helping her it's really important it helps them to control their legacy control their money have financial gain and whatever he did she got her masters you can play anita baker while you're cleaning while you're cooking while you're whatever in <laughs> she has the control of her masters so kudos to her and i would love man if i could go see anita baker whoo i would that's the thing to see our grades i've seen anita i mean i'm sorry i've seen patty labelle I wish I would have been able to see Luther while he was alive. God bless the dead. Uh, I have seen um, Angela Winbush. I would love to see Anita Baker. Woo, child. Come on now. She Go ahead and get a tour so I can go get me some tickets. But kudos to her and Chance the Rapper. And 
I'm really excited for her. My last podcast episode, I shouted out some podcast recommendations, some people that I listen to pretty regularly, and then some that I listen to periodically. And one, another one that I want to shout out is Million Dollars Worth of Game that I've just started kind of listening to. I follow Gilly the Kid, so I I do listen to or watch his snippets, but I watch, I've been watching the or trying to watch the full episodes with him and Wallow, and it's just really entertaining. It's a hip hop podcast. They be hilarious all over the place, but in a good way. And I just recently watched the episode with Mano and Jimmy, Jim Jones, the Lobby Boys, and that was great. They they I mean I love. Jim Jones and Mano is a handsome, fine individual. Like, but uh, they're you know they're great. Wallow is always very inspirational, and so is Gilly. And um, they're almost at a million followers on YouTube. So that's a really good podcast if you're really into hip hop. And so I wanted to shout them out as well. Last but not least, before I wrap this up, I had said that I wasn't um, sure if I was going to recap the reunion of Mary at First Sight. I'm not. (laughs) This season has been all over the place and I, my thoughts on, I'll do a little like montage uh, really quickly so the couples that are still married Katina and Olajuwon and Noi and Steve Jasmina and Michael didn't make it and Lindsay and Mark didn't make it I hope that I'm getting everyone's names correct I really feel like Jasmina did not put effort in the marriage but Michael did um, Steve and Noi, with them not living together, I honestly don't have a lot of high hopes. I hope that they can, I hope they can make it. I, I don't know how an, a new marriage can be successful and you're not living together. Katina and Olajuwon. Olajuwon has shown some growth. If he continues to mature, they could make it. And then Lindsay and Mark. The toxicity it's probably best that they didn't make it this was just a really challenging season there's a new season that is starting and so okay let me sum up uh, let me sum up this one Boston was just I had more high hopes I wish them all the best I, I like that they oh I like I'm sorry I like that they are have a strong friendship but I'm really kind of disappointed that they didn't they don't they didn't really go in on Jasmina who really didn't give the marriage a try. And I still don't understand the not living together and your married thing. So that's that. And I'm really interested in so next week is where are they now? Chris is dating someone and I think he's the sister or she's the sister of one of the previous Married at First Sight guys. I think that's her. I don't remember his name. So come on, Chris, and get you a boo. I'm all for it. So that's that. The new season of Married at First Sight starts in June. And I can't remember where it is. I think it's in San Francisco. Let me check that out. Nope, just kidding. It's in San Diego. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. I will most likely be reviewing that one. So they don't be wasting. Listen, Lifetime, that is their cash cow. They are not wasting no time with the new seasons of Mary at First Sight. And they are going to have new experts. We're still going to have Pastor Cal, who I adore. And we'll have Dr. Pepper, but Dr. Viviana is not going to be there. We are going to have a new woman and we're going to have 
Devin Franklin, who used to be married to Megan Good, and I believe Devin Franklin is a pastor or a preacher or a bishop. He's in in the faith for sure and i actually have one of his books i haven't read it yet but i follow him on instagram so and so that's gonna be interesting two new experts so we will see how that works out and that is exciting it's sad to see dr viviana go and it's weird because i wonder why she left i did hear that people were not happy with her hopefully she left on her own accord i liked her she did definitely call folks out in a good way. So that is a little update on Married at First Sight. Thank you for listening. The song of this episode, speaking of Mayno and Jim Jones, they recently released an album. The album was released on May 27th called The Lobby Boys. And the song of the podcast is called Slide. And I really like that song. It features Jim Jones, Mano, and Fivio. I never know how to say his name. Fivio Fiven? I'm saying that incorrectly. Fivio Foreign, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that song is a bop for sure and thank you for listening I hope you're doing well take care of yourselves and if you are able take care of each other listen check me out subscribe to me so that whenever I release my podcast which my main podcast release every Thursday morning 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time subscribe to me so that when I post you get my podcast immediately you can listen to me on pretty much anywhere that you get podcasts. That is Amazon, Apple, iHeartRadio, Google, Spotify, and now on YouTube. Leave me a comment. Subscribe to me over there. Leave me some comments, some show ideas. What do you think about this DL and Monique fiasco? Who was in the right? Was it Monique? Should she have ranted like that? Was it DL? Was it the promoter's problem? Let me know what you think. And until next episode, stay safe and I'll be talking to you soon.